It's mid-March and a bit early for big sap runs in Sandy Bay Township, just a couple of miles south of the Canadian border. But in the maple syrup business, Mother Nature dictates the work schedule. And last night's freeze and today's nearly 60-degree temperature means that it's all hands on deck at Gray J Maple Works. In this case, it's just four hands. Couple Donna and Jeremy Fragone manage 8,000 taps connected by tubing that crisscrosses the Sugarbush property they lease from the state. I have to check my records, but I feel like this is early to be making this much syrup. The raw sap rapidly fills a 5,000-gallon tank. And when it runs like this, Donna and Jeremy work virtually nonstop. The time investment is tremendous. Yeah. The amount of hours we put in, I, I wish we had kept track. It's unbelievable. I don't know if we want to know how many <laughs> hours we put in. Huh? Donna is monitoring the evaporator and making adjustments. Even the slightest change in barometric pressure can affect the taste and quality of the syrup. Last year, their operation produced about 3,200 gallons. Maine's iconic maple syrup industry is the third largest producer in the U.S. behind Vermont and New York. And Somerset County produces 95 percent of that Maine syrup. But scientists warn that the maple belt, the area where sugar maple trees can grow, is narrowing amid extreme weather events and rising temperatures. One prediction is that New England's maple syrup production could be cut in half by the end of the century. It's clear that that is, going to sh is shifting north and will continue to shift north. Northern Maine may still be in that belt uh, 50 to 100 years from now, but southern Maine will not. At the same time, the effects of climate change are making the region inhospitable for sensitive sugar maples. University of Maine researchers say sap season is coming earlier. It's also shorter, especially in southern New England. What we're expecting is um, more sap at one time um, as our season maybe gets smaller or the warm-ups are quicker. And, and we've seen some of those runs the last few years. Northern Maine appears less vulnerable, but elsewhere there's concern that extreme weather events and diminished snowpack can also affect the health of maple trees and the quality of the sap they produce. Some years the sugar content is significantly lower, like last year. A lot of sap, low sugar content, right. for whatever reason. Just across the road, Bill Jarvis manages the land leased by Arnold Farms, which produced nearly 20,000 gallons of syrup last year. Claude and Francois Rodrigue, a Canadian father-son duo, own the business, which has expanded rapidly over the past two decades. They have 80,000 taps set by teams of migrant workers, and the sap is pushed along through five video-monitored pump houses and funneled into the sugar house through six miles of underground piping. Already, the sugar content in this sap batch is higher compared to last year. But I don't know about tomorrow. We only know if I, <laughs> we get it as we get. We've got to be very, very uh, adaptive mm -hmm. to everything that can happen. The same goes for Maine's $50 million maple syrup industry. I think Maine can continue to produce as much maple syrup as it has in the past. It's just that it will do that in a different place. A place like northern Somerset County.